A viewer recently asked me what diameter is my four jaw chuck that I use on the Boxford lathe and the answer to that as you can see is six inches. And here it is all ready to go and make part nine of how to build a model steam engine but instead it's called problems with some castings. And you'll find out why later on. Before I start the proceedings I'd just like to show you this. This is called a height gauge and I suppose it's called a height gauge because you can use it for gauging height. What it's normally used for is scribing lines on pieces of metal at a fixed height from the base that it's sat on. And in this case it's sat on my surface plate. What I'm doing at the moment is looking at the height of the gap between the top cap and the main bearing. And this tells me how much metal will have to be removed off the bottom of the bearing to make the centre of the bearing the correct height for the engine. I'm not using the height gauge to mark out these two pieces of metal because I already have a line which is the join between the bottom part and the top part. All I need to do here is scribe a vertical line which tells me which is the middle of the bearing from left to right. And for any viewers who are following the How to Build a Model Steam Engine series, I'm going to use Oilite bearings. I bought these from my friends at Blackgates Engineering as usual, and they are 5 eighths of an inch long, 5 eighths of an inch in diameter, and half an inch internal diameter, perfect for the job. First I need to machine the bearing blocks to accept these oilite bushes. This is not on the drawing, this is a modification. The drawing just shows a 7 16 hole through these blocks, which is what it's supposed to be for the crankshaft. I've used a half inch diameter crankshaft, so if I wasn't using oilite bushes, I would be going through the middle of these bearings with a half inch reamed hole. But now decided to use the 5 8 oilite bushes, then obviously the hole down the middle of the bearing block has to be 5 8 of an inch too. What you're watching at the moment is me reducing the outside diameter of the centre boss. I need to get to clean metal through the casting skin. And once I got through to clean metal on the external diameter, I just faced the end. The centre mark in the centre is of no consequence at the moment. It was just one I made as I was positioning the casting in the forge or chuck. And now I'm using the centre drill for real to make a good deep centre drill mark in the centre of the work. And I'm following this through with a 930 seconds twist drill. Why 930 seconds? Well, I don't know. It's just the one on the bottom row of the drill set to the left. And then I used the one on the middle row of the drill set to the left. And now the hole is just big enough to let in the boring tool. I could carry on just upsizing the drills and going through, but they're quite brutal when they get to larger sizes. And this is quite a fragile part. It's soft metal, it's gun metal, it's soft soldered together. So I didn't want to destroy the part by putting a massive big drill through there. So I used the boring tool to do most of the work. And once I got the hole nearly to the right size, I used a machine reamer to make the hole exactly 5 8 of an inch in diameter and to get a good finish in there too. And don't forget, if you're using a reamer in the lathe, slow down the rotation speed and then feed in the reamer slowly and steadily. That way you will get an accurate fit. If the lathe is going too fast, two things may happen. The reamer will probably cut oversize and the worst case scenario is the reamer starts to chatter. All I need to do now is just clean up the outside edge, which I'm doing at the moment. My original plan was to do this with both of the bearing blocks, that is, machine one side, bore the hole down the centre, and then the original plan was to mount both of the half finished blocks on a piece of 5 8 bar using some Loctite 603. With the machine surfaces facing each other, then all I would have to do is put the piece of 5 8 bar in a three jaw chuck and machine the other side, turn the bar around and machine the other side, and then the bearing would be complete apart from the threaded holes to take the bolts that hold the top caps in place. And the piece of 5 8 bar would remain in the bearing blocks until the whole job was finished, but that's not to be. Just look at this. This casting is definitely not auditioning for casting of the year, but it happens. I can't be too scathing. These are called blow holes. And the good thing is, I've not really wasted too much time. Sometimes when you're machining cylinders, you'll get a blowhole after you've done a lot of work. And that is very, very frustrating. It's a good idea to have a stone slab on the bench to bang your head on if this happens. You will also notice that the ream finish isn't very good because all the sand and grit that came out of the blowhole made a bit of a mess of the bore. 
As this is a modification using oil like bushes as bearings, I could use this, but I'm not going to because I would always know that the top bearing cap was a mess. Another thing about this bearing that's puzzling me is that on the drawing it says that the bearing must be 3 eighths of an inch thick, but this is 3 eighths of an inch thick unmachined, so the entire casting is really undersized. Time to look in my box of Stuart castings. I'm going to have a good rummage about in here and see what I've got. I'm only looking at these castings to compare the sizes, that's providing that I have the right type of castings. I'm not going to use these castings, these are my special stock. I'm going to phone Stuart Models and ask them if they would kindly send me some more castings that are the correct size. I don't know which specific Stuart Model these castings came from, but these look to be the correct castings, They're the same height exactly as the ones that I was sent in the kit, but they're a bit thicker, so I can at least machine them to the correct size. So you just write this off to experience, it's happened before, it won't be the first time it's happened and it won't be the last. And this can happen to any casting, not just ones from Stuart Models, castings from anywhere can have blowholes in them. From my experience, Stuart Models have always been good with castings. If there are any problems, they put it right, they send you a replacement. And that's the way it's always been. That's about it then, unless I use these castings, which are very old and very good, I can't complete part 9 of how to build a model steam engine. That will have to wait. But thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.